right now at this very moment, as you watch these light rays striking the magnified eye, similar tiny beams of light are entering your own eyes. And it's by our eyes that we are able to gain a great part of our knowledge. Nature has located the eye close to the brain so that its messages may arrive there quickly. Nature has also provided ample protection for this very delicate organ. Here, with the outer coverings removed, we see the eyeball completely surrounded by a layer of soft, fatty tissue and placed within the bony orbit where it lies protected against sudden jolts. Seen from the side, the protected position of the eyeball within its funnel-shaped eye socket is shown still more clearly. Once again, we see the fatty cushion which protects it on all sides. Note this white stalk, which is the optic nerve, and also these muscles which move the eyeball. This is the empty eye socket within the skull, with its bony walls inside and the rim of the bony orbit in front. By gradually restoring the outer portions of the skull and also the covering tissues, we can now realize the location of the entire eye in relation to the outline of the face. Another important safeguard to the eye is the tear gland, which secretes the tear fluid. This is an effective germicide which drains through the tear ducts into the nose after flushing and cleaning the entire eye surface. The eyeball itself has a white, glistening surface. Its front part bulges and forms a highly transparent window. In this sectional view, the capsule of the eyeball is seen to have three layers. This thick, tough outer layer is called the sclera and serves to protect the delicate structures within. This transparent bulging portion is called the cornea. Notice also the crystalline lens, which is one of the main features of the eye mechanism. The second layer is called the choroid. It consists of three different belts or zones. The first zone is called the choroid proper and is the part that carries nourishment to the tissues of the eye. The next zone is called the ciliary body. This is a broad ring-shaped band of thin muscle fibers which play a very active and vital part in the visual adjustment of the eye. The third zone is the well-known iris, which expands and contracts the pupil, much like the diaphragm of a camera. The iris will soon be described in greater detail. Here is an outside view of the entire choroid, which shows the dense network of arteries and veins carrying nourishment to the eyeball. You can also see the shape of the ciliary body and the iris. The innermost layer of the eyeball is the retina, a very delicate membrane. The retina is actually a part of the optic nerve which transmits the light impulses to our brain. The retina is the most important and complex structure in the eyeball. Magnified many hundred times, the retina is seen to consist of this complicated arrangement of rods and cones which convert light waves into nerve impulses in some manner which even science of today cannot fully explain. Between the lens and the cornea is the aqueous humor, consisting mostly of water and a little salt. This larger space within the eye is filled with the vitreous humor, or body, consisting chiefly of water with some salt and albumin. The vitreous humor is really a highly transparent jelly and plays a very important part in the act of visual adjustment. Thus, light rays entering the eye must pass in succession through First, the cornea, second, the aqueous humor, third, the pupil, fourth, the crystalline lens, and fifth, the vitreous humor, in order to reach their destination, the retina.